On the screen here, we're going to open up today with a song that simply just says, Lift Him Up. And all you got to do is look up here and sing, because the Word of God says, If Christ be lifted up, what will He do? He said He would draw all. He didn't say, it says, If He be lifted up, the power to draw all men unto Him. So as we sing this morning, stand with us and let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning and just sing along with us. We may do it a couple of times. You'll get the hang of it. But let's just worship him this morning. I'll show you. All right, Todd, we ready? I can see you humming a little bit. You're trying to get the feel of that song, right? Now that, that's a Rambo song, all right? And it simply says to lift him up. And we're going we're gonna to do this. We want this to be our theme. Every day when we come in is to lift him up and to worship him. And I know when we do something a little different, we look and we wonder, what is Bobby Plass doing up here? <laughs> but we want you to just take the word of God in our hearts and just worship him and be the church that lifts his name up, that has significance on the community that we live in. Todd, if you would, can you give us that one again? Now just loosen up this morning and just worship him, amen? It's all right to smile. Thank you, Kate. Lift him up, lift him up. Lift the name of Jesus higher, lift him up. To the sky. He said, If I be lifted up, I will draw men unto me. Lift him up, all ye people, lift him up. Good job. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise his righteousness forever. He said if we won't praise his name, then the rocks and stones will cry out, praise the Lord, all ye people, praise the Lord.
Amen. Thank you, Steve. <coughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you here this morning, Lord, we're just, just so thankful, dear God, for you allowing us to come out to worship you here this morning. Let us glorify you through the songs we sing. And dear Lord, we just pray for the message that's brought to us this morning. Dear God, we just pray that we'll apply this message to our lives and let us just live our lives unto you. Lord, we just pray this morning for this offering. We pray, dear God, that you would take this offering and use it for the furtherance of your kingdom in this community, in this world, dear God, that uh, as we look out and we see that people are they just don't believe. They don't believe in you, Lord. We just pray that they'll turn their their eyes unto you before it's eternally too late, Lord, and give their lives and just get saved, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Page 353, you may be seated. Turn to page uh, 353 when we all get to heaven, the first and the last. <laughs>
week after all this stuff happened. But my initial reaction Tuesday, we got to practice, and somebody said, you know, somebody sue in the school, and I'm going to play to pull it up to see one of our cheerleading banners. And my gut reaction to that was I'm about to lose my job. I told them, I said, shame on me that that was my reaction. Because God's got it all under control. And he has it planned, and he's taking care of me this far. He'll take care of me as long as I've left. And I'm thankful for that. And you'll just sing and worship with us today.
appreciate the choir uh, this morning. I appreciate the songs that were sung uh, here today, and I appreciate y'all so much. It's good to be in God's house. Let me encourage you uh, to come back uh, tonight and be a, uh, be a part of the service tonight. The Silvertone Choir is going to be here tonight. They're from Buford, uh, Georgia, and uh, they'll be here with us tonight. There's somewhere between 100 and 120 uh, members of that choir. And uh, I had an opportunity of hearing them uh, back about a week and a half ago. And uh, I'll tell you what, they are, they are really good. Come back tonight, bring somebody with you uh, tonight at 6 o'clock uh, in the service. It'll be a tremendous blessing uh, to you. I want to ask you to open your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Deuteronomy to start with. Uh, chapter number 4 of the book of Deuteronomy. And we want to look at three things. Uh, this morning that God has laid on our heart, and I ask you to pray for the next few minutes as we look into God's Word. Uh, But one is this, to know God, and to know that God is inescapable. And the third thing is that God cannot be contained. And I want you to think about those three things uh, this morning as we look into God's Word. Uh, We're going to start, first of all, in Deuteronomy chapter number 4. And if you're able to do so, would you stand uh, for the reading of God's Word this morning? In Deuteronomy chapter number 4, and I'd like to begin reading uh, with verse number 1. We're going to skip some of these verses, uh, but I'd like to begin reading with verse number 1. The Bible reads like this. It says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor, For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him Far. Skip down, if you will, into verse number 31. The Bible says, For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which are before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the other one side of heaven unto the other, where they hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard and live? Or hath God essayed to go and to take him a nation from the midst of another nation, by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in the Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord He is God, and there's none else beside Him. I challenge you to read this whole chapter uh, when you get home, but notice verse 35. And what it says, it says, Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, He is God. There's none else 
beside Him. He is God alone. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow in Your presence. And God, we just thank You so much for the day. Thank You for Your blessings. Thank You for Your presence, Lord, we feel here in our midst. Speak to us through Your Word. Strengthen us as Your children. Uh, God, we pray that we'll stand uh, for You in this day and age in which You and I live. Thank You for Your love. Thank You for Your mercy. Thank You for Your grace that You've shown to us all. We love You. Thank You. We praise You. God, we adore You. We come to worship You in spirit and in truth today. Lord, we pray that You'll save some precious soul in this place today uh, for Jesus' sake. God, those that may be discouraged today, God, I pray they'll be in strengthened and encouraged through Your Word. Uh, God, those that, that just may feel like that they're all alone, God, I pray that let them know that You're right there uh, with them. God, help us. Uh, Lord, it's the body of Christ to be drawn close closer together and closer to You. Help us to exalt You in every song that we sing, every lesson we teach, every sermon we preach. Uh, help us to lift high the name of Jesus before a lost and dying world. Thank You, Lord, for all that You have done. Thank You for what You're doing today. Thank You what you're, for what You're going to do uh, in the days ahead. In Jesus' name and for His sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank You so much. As we look in this scripture uh, this morning, the children of Israel, as a new generation, has come along. And you remember how because of idolatry and how that God allowed many of the children of Israel uh, to die into the wilderness. And Moses is just reaffirming uh, the commandments and the statutes uh, that he had laid out previously. He told them in chapter number 4 uh, how that they had even many of them that were there uh, with him had heard uh, the voice of God as God spoke and God gave uh, the commandments unto the children of Israel. He told them how that even they saw the tables of stone uh, that God had written uh, the Ten Commandments upon and how that they had, had seen those things. They had heard uh, the very voice of God as He spoke uh, there from the mountain. And He reminded them. And I think sometimes uh, that you and I need to be reminded uh, of some things. And He reminded uh, the children of Israel uh, here in verse number 35 uh, that we mentioned. He told them this, He said, Unto you, unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know you know, it's one thing to know about God, but it's another thing to know Him. I mean to know Him. What you hold in your lap uh, this morning is a copy of the Word of God. It is God's Word. It is the precious Word of God. And you can sit down. I know people that can. I've not been able to do this. But people that can, can, can memorize and they can memorize the Scripture, and, and they can open up and, and quote you an entire book uh, out of the Bible. Not just a verse, not just a chapter, but they can quote an entire book uh, out of the Bible uh, from memory. Uh, you can sit here this morning, and you can open up the Word of God, and you can memorize uh, the Word of God. You could memorize it from Genesis uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 1, all the way through the book of Revelation, and you can memorize that. It's one thing uh, to know uh, the Word of God. It's one one thing uh, to know about the Word of God, but it's a totally different thing uh, to know the author of God's Word. He is God. He is God. Never forget that. I know there's a lot of things that have, have been taking place uh, this week, but always remind that we must remind ourselves that God is still God, and God will always be God, and God changes not. Our circumstances change. The things that we deal with uh, may change. But God will never change. And, and Moses, as, as this was given uh, to the children of Israel, he wanted them to know. He said, look, he said, unto you it has been showed. And as we sit here in the house of God today, many of us have seen uh, God's handiwork. 
We've been eyewitness and we've seen uh, many of the things that, that God has done and that God is doing. You know, we have, have been an eyewitness and, and we've seen how that God changes people's lives. It is amazing uh, to see. You know what? You know, they, there's been, as we go back and you study in Scripture, and you'll find after the death of Jesus, you remember that they went, uh, some of them went and said, look, the deceiver said that in three days he's going to rise again. said, command that there be a watch set there, uh, and the tomb would be sealed unless the disciples come and steal away his body. And we'll be worse off if his body comes up missing uh, than, than we, we've been in the past. And you remember how they, they told them, said, you've got a watch, you go set, uh, you go make it sure. And they went and they set a watch around uh, the tomb there. They sealed uh, the tomb that there was absolutely uh, no way humanly possible uh, that, that, he could, that, that his body uh, would come up missing. But what they did not realize, this was God incarnate. This was God in flesh. He was God. He was God. And the Bible said that the third day he rose again. You remember how that they went to the tomb and the women went to the tomb and they went there for the purpose of anointing His dead body with spices. But when they got there, they, they were discussing on the way and they said, who's going to roll the stone away? There's a great stone rolled there uh, in face. But when they got there, they found out that the stone was rolled away already and they, uh, then His body uh, was not there. They went and reported uh, to the other uh, disciples what had taken place, what they had seen. And the disciples didn't believe them. And you know, Peter and John went and they went and they ran uh, to the tomb and how that they went in and they saw uh, the linen clothes lie and, a, and the napkin that was about his face and his head uh, wrapped up and in a separate place. And the Bible said that the, some of the soldiers went and they told that his body was gone and how that he, uh, the tomb was empty. And they said, well, said you just say uh, that his disciples came and stole away his body. I want to tell you what, the greatest bombshell uh, that ever hit uh, this unbelieving world is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's alive, he's alive in well, He's real today. And I'm going to tell you what, regardless of what anybody else says, He is God, He is God, He is God, and above Him there is none else. The Scripture said here, He says, Unto thee it was showed, Now thou mightest know. We've seen some things, folks. I'm going to tell you what, the greatest testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is an individual's life that's been changed by the power of God. If you'll go and study out 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it's the resurrection chapter. It lets us know the importance of the resurrection. It said, if there's no resurrection, it says our faith is vain and we're yet in our sins. And those that have, have, have died in Christ, they have perished if there was no resurrection from the dead. But thanks be unto God, you and I this morning as we gather here, uh, we don't serve a dead God. Uh, we don't serve a God that's still in a grave uh, somewhere. Uh, we serve a God that is alive and well. Uh, he's very alive and well. And He is very God. He is God. And there's above Him, there is none else. To know Him. To know Him. You see, I, I mentioned a while ago, we could, we could memorize that Bible from cover to cover and still not know Him. Huh? We can memorize that Bible from cover to cover and still not know Him. The most important thing is to know Him. Know the author. Know the author. I'm glad I know Him today, aren't you? You're glad you know Him? Glad you're a child of God. Glad you're saved by the grace of God. He is God and above Him there is none else. Now I want to ask you to turn to the second place. Uh, today, if you will, turn to the 139th Psalm. And I want us to look at something here uh, in this Psalm. We're going to read about 14 verses uh, from this chapter. And I want you to notice this. The Bible says in the 139th Psalm, beginning verse number 1, it says, O Lord... Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. 
There's, for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. The psalmist says, God, you know everything about me. You know every single thing about me. It says, Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. He says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. To thee, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Now I want you to think about this. The first thought was no God. To know God above Him, there is none else. The second thing, know this. God is inescapable. He knows every single thing about us. Do you know He knows every thought that we've already had today? He knows the thought that we have right now. He knows every single thing about us. There's not one single thing about us that is hidden from Almighty God. He knows everything. And He is inescapable. Folks, I'm going to tell you what. It don't matter where we go. He's there. It don't matter what we're doing. He's still there. It can be in the middle of the night. He's still there. It can be on a mountaintop somewhere. You know what? He's still there. It may be down in a valley. But you know what? He is still there. We may be as far as our spiritual walk. We may be riding high on a mountain. And I want to tell you what, God is right there. Spiritually, we may be down in the lowest valley and we just wonder how it can get any worse, how it can get any lower. But know this, on the authority of God's Word, God is still there. It doesn't matter our circumstance. It doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter what we're dealing with. It doesn't matter about any of those things. God is still there. He is inescapable. There's a lot of people think, and they've got it in their mind, that they'll go through this life and they'll never have to deal with God. But I want to tell you what, there's coming a day when every man, woman, boy, or girl, regardless of who they are, are going to recognize that there is God and that God is inescapable. The psalmist said here, it doesn't matter. I mean, he said he he knows everything about me. He knows every single thing. It's it's said there in verse number 1, Thou hast searched me and known me. Searched me and known me. There's things in our lives that we may just feel like we've got packed away somewhere. There's things in our lives that we may feel like that absolutely nobody knows about. And they may be nobody in this world that knows about it. But I want to tell you what, God is inescapable. He knows every single thing. He knows it. The very hair of our head is numbered. God knows. He knows. You know why? Because God is inescapable. The last thing I want you to think about this morning is this, is that God cannot be contained. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter number 6. The other week I tried to bring a message uh, concerning how that, you know, God did not allow David to build the house of God because he was a man of war and he had shed blood. But he did allow David to, 
to get the materials together and to help gather the materials uh, for the house of God and how that Solomon uh, was to build that house. I want you to notice something here in chapter number 6. And Solomon prayed and was dedicating the house of God. And I want you to notice a portion of this prayer. In 2 Chronicles chapter number 6 beginning with verse number 12. The Bible reads like this. It says, And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long, five cubits broad, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth, which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. Thou which hast kept with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, and spakest with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him, saying, There shall not fall, uh, fail thee a man in thy sight to sit upon the throne of Israel, yet so that thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law as thou hast walked before me. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in every deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. Have respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry of the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy, na thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place." Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. Notice verse 18. And he said this, But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven... And the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. Know God. Know that God is inescapable. And know this, that God cannot be contained. Do you know what would happen today? The world would like for us today to keep God inside these four walls. The world would like for us today... Uh, to keep Him inside this building. The world don't care that you come here on Sunday morning. The world don't care that you come here on Sunday night. The world don't care that you come here on Wednesday night. The world don't care uh, that you come to revival. The world don't care about those things. What bothers the world is when we go outside of these four walls and God is not contained. The world says keep your mouth shut. The world says we don't want to hear it. The world says erase it from the buildings. The world, there's government buildings. Today, you check this out. There's government buildings today that has the Word of God inscribed on that. And people don't want to see it there because they want God to be contained. But I'm glad this morning that I can tell you this. God cannot be contained. Whether it be in a building, and I'm going to go a step further uh, than this. You think about this. Whether it be a, be a building... If you read out of 
1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. And it reads like this. It says, What? Listen to this. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own, The Bible says, For you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God is God above Him, there's none else. God is inescapable. You can't run far enough uh, to get away from God. He is inescapable. He's everywhere. And children of God today... Realize this, that God in the person of the Holy Spirit indwells you as a child of God. He is living within you. When you walk outside of these doors and you walk out in this community, you go to your job, uh, you go to your homes, uh, you go to the shopping centers, uh, you go wherever you go, to your schools, God is still there. He's within you as a child of God. Our body is the body. It is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If we're saved by God's grace, God indwells us as a child of God. The world would say, keep it in the walls. The world would say, keep it to yourself. But Jesus said something different. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, Jesus says this, verses 13 through 16. He says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. He says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You and I have a responsibility. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to go a step further. You and I have got an opportunity today. We have an opportunity with everything that's taking place in this county and in our community. You and I as a child of God, we have an opportunity not to be arrogant, not to be bullheaded, but to show the love of Christ with people that we meet. Not everybody in this county is a Christian. Not everybody uh, in this county knows the same God that you and I know. But I do know this, that you and I as a child of God, saved by the grace of God, God in the person of the Holy Spirit indwells us. And you you and I, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can share the love of Christ with those that we meet. He says, let your light so shine before men. The world would say, That's what the world would say. You keep silent. Chris used a verse last night out of the book of Jeremiah. And it just cemented this for this morning. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. And I tell you what, Jeremiah had a great burden. I want to ask you this morning... What kind of burden do we have? Jeremiah had a great burden. God had given him a message. The message was not popular. The people didn't want to hear what Jeremiah had to say. And I'll tell you what, people today, a lot of people, don't want to hear what you you and I have got to say as a child of God. They want us just to to be quiet. That's what they want us to do is just to be quiet. In just a little bit, we're going to dismiss. 
And we're going to leave this place. We're going to go outside these, these four walls. The world will say, keep it in there. You keep it in there. Don't get too excited about what you've got. I'm going to tell you what, I, what the Lord did for me. He, it's exciting what He did for me in my life. I mean, He changed my life. Changed my direction. Changed my walk. Changed my talk. And I want to tell you, praise God, He changed my destination. Huh? And if you're saved by God's grace, He's done the same for you. And boy, we've got something to tell. We've got something to share uh, with others. And the world just keeps on whacking and keep on whacking and keep on whacking. And if you're not careful, we'll be like Jeremiah. Old Jeremiah said this. I mean, they, they didn't like Jeremiah, didn't like his message. They even had him put in jail. And Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse number 9. He says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. In other words, Jeremiah said, I'm going to just keep my mouth shut. You ever had, you ever had to go, go to talk to somebody about the Lord and just literally just have a door slammed in your face? I have. I've been to the hospital. Talked to somebody on their deathbed that needed Christ. And they'd tell me, I don't want to hear what you got to say. Had a man on his front porch tell me one time, said, there ain't nothing to it. I don't want nobody else coming back here and talking to me about it. Two weeks later, his heart busted and he is dead. Had a man in this community. He said, I told Mama before I died that I'd get right with God. Two weeks before he died, I stood on his front porch Shared with him the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And he said, if you, Preacher, if you get up in the morning and you see where you see my name or hear my name called out, you can say, well, he was thinking about it. He was thinking about it. I'm going to tell you, I told him, I said, you've got to do more than think about it. Thinking about it won't get you there. Won't do it. Won't do it. You and I have got a message. The world won't like it. But you and I have got a message and a responsibility and an opportunity to share that message through the love of Christ. Jeremiah said, I'll not make mention of Him nor speak any more in His name. He said, I'm going to quit. But notice the next part of that verse. And I pray that this will be where we'll be. It says, but His Word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. In other words, I was weary with keeping my mouth shut. And He said, and I could not stay. He said, I, I just couldn't be quiet anymore. You know what? I believe this is the time. Now is the time that God's people will not be quiet anymore. We've been like this way too long. And it's time to stand up and not be quiet and share the message of the love of God with the love of God in our hearts to those that listen. Don't know your heart this morning, but I do know this. I can pray, you can pray, a football team can pray, a coach can pray, anywhere, anytime. Nobody can stop us from praying. Nobody. They pass all the laws they want to. They cannot stop you from praying. And we'll never stop. We'll never stop. If you want to see something done, it's time to pray. If you want to see something happen for the glory of God, it's time to pray. If you want to see this community changed and continue to change, it's time to pray. If you want to see our state changed, it's time to pray. If you want to see our nation changed, if you want to see Washington, D.C. changed, you know what it's going to take? 
It's going to take prayer. 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 Not emotion. It's going to take real, genuine prayer to get the job done. Let's stand our feet. Bobby, if y'all will come. Number one, do you know God? Do you know God? He is God above Him. There's none else. Number two, do you know that God is inescapable? No matter where you go, what you do, who you're with, God is there. He's inescapable. Nothing is hidden from the all-seeing eye of God. You know the Bible tells us He knows the intent of our heart. He knows everything. Nothing's hidden from Him. God is inescapable. And I'm going to tell you what. God cannot be contained. And our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, but I'm going to tell you what. It's and truly saved, it's going to have an effect on somebody else because you cannot contain God. You cannot. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility. Solomon knew it regarding the building that he had built. He said, heaven can't contain you. And he said, this building's not going to contain you. And I'm going to tell you what, heaven can't contain God. You and I can't contain Him. <laughs> We're going to share Him. We've got to. What a privilege. So we sing together. Whatever the need is, whatever you got on your heart, be obedient to the Lord as we sing this morning. Page 536, 536, bottom of the page, when I see the blood. Christ our Redeemer died on Thank you.